Welcome to the Thunder Hour Podcast, hosted by Trey Hamilton and produced by Leif Dietrich. All right, welcome back to Thunder Hour. This is episode one, part two, uh, and this is the second half of our interview segment. Uh, we'll also be releasing within this episode an interview with the president and owner of the Tilsonburg Thunder, Mr. Mike Hawley, but... For now, we're going to focus on our special guest of the hour. We are very, very pleased to be joined alongside the general manager of the Tilsonburg Thunder and the senior executive of the nonprofit organization known as the Western Ontario Super Hockey League. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, Mr. Bill Ryan. Thanks for having me, guys. For sure, Bill. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank so, you. Um, a lot of things have changed uh, since the last time we had a chat uh, for the fans who know we were supposed to release an interview with Bill uh, last week, but unfortunately we had some technical issues. We addressed it. Um, so we're going to be kind of giving the same interview, but yep. also adding to it because, uh, as I said, some of the things have changed. The roster is a little bit more finalized. We actually have a, a copy of that right here, so we're really excited to get into that. But we'll just start it off with kind of the same questions uh, that we had last week. So, Bill, why don't you just go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and your role within the Thunder and uh, the league to the fan base. Well, you know, I, I figured I didn't volunteer enough, so I, I, I wear a couple of hats. <laughs> Obviously, uh, you know, I'm a booster and supporter of the Thunder uh, sponsor as well as the general manager. And uh, then I thought, oh, you know, all these years in the in the other league, we switched over to the new league. I said, why not uh, Why not help start the new league and run it? And uh, uh, myself, Jamie Petrie, my colleague, Dave Cassoni, sat down in and had a meeting, and uh, next thing you know, the Walsen was born, and I didn't realize how much work it was going to create for Jamie Petrie and myself, and <laughs> and now the hockey operations team that we bought on board. But uh, that's basically me in a nutshell. Yeah, a uh, sucker for punishment. Absolutely, it definitely seems to be that way. But you still know how to put a really good product on the ice, even though you're a sucker for punishment. You seem to be extremely talented at your job. Uh, so that'll kind of lead us into the next question, Leafa. What do you got for Bill? Uh, what are your expectations for your Thunder this season? Well, I don't I don't start any season without expecting to win it all at the end. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in order to in order to win, you got to have a winning attitude, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. um, we had a couple of hiccups the last few years where I thought we should have won it all at the end, but we didn't get there. So, mm -hmm. you know, this year we've we've made some changes, added some pieces, some guys you know retired or or aren't back yet. You never know at senior level they could be back later, mm -hmm. but. Um, I like what we've done. I, I think uh, it's uh, it's a championship final or bust again. So. Absolutely, absolutely. That's yep. uh, what was it like being there for the last two seasons as the general manager of this organization and seeing the other team come in to our barn and and win the championship. That must have been definitely a really I'll, tough. I'll give you my thing. I'll give you my PG. Yeah, yeah. Let's go PG. Of, of what yeah. that was like. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, I've been on the home ice when we won a championship. Mm -hmm. And I've been on the home ice when we've lost the championship twice now, and I'll take the win any day of the week. Absolutely. Um, watching watching your fans leave the building disappointed, and watching the other team's fans celebrate in the background while pictures are being taken, and uh, you know cups being carried around the ice by the wrong team, that mm -hmm. doesn't sit that well with me. Absolutely. So, not. and and it shouldn't probably for anybody with any competitive spirit. Absolutely so. not. One hundred percent. And uh, that's even what we were chatting with Mike about. He even said that you're a very competitive guy, and that helps to drive you to make sure you're putting the best effort uh, into getting the guys that we need to go forward and ultimately get that final goal accomplished, which is obviously winning a Western Ontario Super Hockey League championship on the home ice. So Exactly. I got I got three problems. I'm too fat, too old, and I suffer from loft. <laughs> you, guys know, do you, know, do you guys know what loft is? No, you might as well go into detail on it. Lack of friggin' talent. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. <laughs> lack, lack of talent. Well, so, oh. so I can't I can't play the game, so, you know, the next best thing is being involved, right? Absolutely, and you seem to do a really good job, and that's why we wanted to touch base and kind of ask you a couple questions uh, regarding what what details can you give us? Obviously, you're a senior executive with the Western Ontario Super Hockey League. You and Jamie Petrie do a great job. You guys have put together a heck of a hockey league, uh, and, and it seems to really be growing, moving in the right direction. So I wanted to know, uh, with you being a senior executive, what details can you share on – the Ontario Super Hockey League, and if you want to just let us know, and as, as a second part of the question, where do you see the Ontario Super Hockey League in, let's say, the year 2025? Where do you see this all heading? In what direction? Sure. So as it stands today, the Ontario Super Hockey League is 
a partnership between myself, uh, well, basically the executive directors of the Western Ontario Super Hockey League and the executive directors of the Eastern Ontario Super, Eastern Ontario Super Hockey League. Um, right now, it's a marketing partnership. We're working on developing websites. Obviously, we're trying to get both of our seasons launched, uh, but we're working on developing websites and get some joint marketing going where, you know, you just get that many more eyes on both sides of the, the province's products. Um, we do. Where do we see it leading? We're we're working on and we're hoping to put together a uh, a championship style tournament at the end of this season for the last week of April, um, almost like a mini mini Memorial Cup. Okay. Um, right now we're working on deciding who's going to host. We lost the toss, so if the tournament happens, it's going to be hosted by the by the East. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're just putting together details, looking for a sponsor for the tournament. And uh, when I say many Memorial Cups, you're, you're not only going to see the two champions face off, you're going to see the finalists and the champion from both leagues playing in that. It'll be like a four-day tournament. Okay, um, okay. Yeah, so the structure's still being worked on, but if, if it all comes together, we'll be looking at, you know, the finalists probably facing off against the other league's champion in a game, and then the winner of each kind of taking each other on, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, so there's, sounds... there's, there's some things ironed out, but both all teams will play at least two games. Okay. That that does that sounds really exciting. I yeah. really hope for that to happen. So yeah, us too. Us too. There's a lot of work and there's a lot of figuring out going on. But uh, absolutely, you know, when we when we originally had this concept, we talked to the Eastern Ontario Super Hockey League, and yeah. the goal always was at some point to do something together. Then we got hit with COVID and yeah. Yeah. and all of these restrictions, and it threw everything into the into the wash. And Mitch Mitch from the East had always thought it'd probably be year three or four for his team before his league before they'd be ready. Mm -hmm. And they're in year four, and we're in year three. So. Yeah. It's awesome to see the the partnership, the camaraderie, and ultimately, like you said, the the, the two coming together, and that would be a really really interesting tournament. One hundred percent, I'd love to see that. In the future, we hope to have a Golden Horseshoe division, a, mm -hmm. a Western, like a Windsor area division, a possibly a Northern Ontario division. Like we'd like to see it branch out into four divisions, and the inquiries and teams inquiring and guys interested in forming divisions have been inquiring. It's just a matter of timing and. Absolutely. And the right individuals, because you can't just let just anybody jump in and decide, hey, I want to try this, right? Yeah, so. for sure. It's yeah. not. It's not. It's not an easy process. Uh -huh. Like talking with Mike and now yourself, it, it seemed like it seems like it's it's quite a bit of work to 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 put a team together in this league. It's not you just Absolutely. throw hundred bucks on the table and you have so many volunteers and then you have to yeah. focus on ice times and all these things. Like it's a it's it's complicated, obviously. So well, and it's a lot tougher for Tilsburg too because we've been established for. What is, I think we're going into our 15th or 16th season here now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Vipers before that, there was 22 years of nonstop senior hockey. So, yeah. so volunteers, you know, they like every volunteer, they all have a shelf life or, or unfortunately we've lost some very good ones due to, you know, passing on, right? Yeah, so for sure. the new teams coming in always seem to have that advantage when it comes to volunteers. Well, you look at what Stratford's got. They've got, you know, 50 volunteers, whereas, you know, we've got eight or 10 good volunteers, but yeah. you need 20 really to make things click the way you want it to click so Absolutely. so people say yeah you're established you, you should be doing good but actually it, it may be easier to get the sponsors but it's tougher to get the other stuff done absolutely 100 percent. so yeah. i know leaf wanted to ask you a quick question uh yeah with uh with uh talking about the ec or the the eastern league yeah, um yeah. i noticed that you signed a couple players and i just want to know the process about signing players yeah so there's a couple of guys that were playing for tweed so that would be a brandon quoto and uh, Sheldon Thompson, they were playing for Tweed, and believe it or not, they live in the Ancaster area. Okay. Yeah. And they were driving to Tweed. Yeah, <sighs> that's a long drive. Back and forth across the GTA to play in that league. Because, you know, they got buddies playing over there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, ironically, they bumped into one of our, uh, <laughs> sometimes I call him my secret GM, Tim yeah. Porter, who's, oh. a, who's a, 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 a second and third string goalie for us several years until he got injured. And Tim's probably one of our best uh, proponents of sending hockey players our way so he gave the guys my number they gave me a call we had some chats you know they like the idea of driving 45 minutes to an hour instead of two and a half hours yeah, yeah. and uh, you know so you know they ended up joining us uh, i know they had talked to some other teams on our side as well but we're the closest solution for them well Absolutely. i guess dunville would be now but uh, they, they chose us so. <laughs> so so that's 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 awesome so i, I think dunville's going to be a, a little bit of a surprise there yeah. in, in in this division they've uh, They've added some pieces this week too. I'm hearing so. for sure. I, I was shocked just seeing the results of uh, of that Tilbury game, and I know Tilbury. We talked about it. You have sometimes you have a 50, 60, 70 percent turnover rate in this league. So obviously yeah. they're not going to be the same team they put together last year. That was an incredible team, and yeah. they just Absolutely. caught everybody off guard. 
But yeah, I mean, still, some guys could be some guys could be late coming to the table too. That happens at this level for sure. Guys have jobs, wives, kids. It's it's tough to get out yeah. there, right? So so I get it. But overall, for Dunville, what a way to start your 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 franchise, Absolutely. right? Like I mean, both yeah. I know Petroli is not the same thing. They are they've been established. They're part of the WOA yeah. for years, and so they have yeah. you know an advantage in terms of jumping into this league. Very similar style of play. Uh, so yeah. we kind of expected yeah. that. Uh, we didn't know how Orangeville would look this year. Expected to be a very good challenge for of the game on Saturday night Absolutely. for sure. I'm, I think it's a really good way to set the table, right? And they've announced a couple of new pieces today too. So you know, yeah. everything's still in flux, right? Absolutely. That's what we were. We got a copy of the roster to this point. I don't know if this is finalized or not. Um, yeah. Wanted to speak on a couple of names um, that we weren't able to chat about last week because we weren't even aware of their uh, existence, other than hearing they were at some skates. So. Um, First of all, we wanted to congratulate you, like we said, on signing the two guys out of the East, and that's Quoto and Thompson. They both seem like after seeing that preseason game, Brandon Quoto looks amazing. Like he looks like a really good hockey player. I think that was a really good move. Uh, I think he'll fit in really well with this team. Um, and also Forsland, Forsland, big defenseman. Uh, we even said that as as goaltenders, goaltenders. We try. Sorry, Sags, we're not quite on your level, but. Um, <laughs> Watching Forsland, one of the things I really like to see, just from a, it being a preseason skate, and I'm sure it's something you noticed as a general manager, his his eyes are always on the play, and he just seems to be he'll he'll melt into that right area of the defensive zone. So so he's, thank uh, you. he's still getting his legs back too. He's uh, he's been away for a little bit for uh, for personal reasons, but I think once he gets his leg back, he's going to open some eyes for sure. Absolutely, we're excited. He's a big guy. Uh, oh. I just seeing him out there on the ice. You're going other than Owen, the the, the third string goaltender at this point. There's nobody I've seen that's that stinking tall. So, um, um Martinelli probably as tall or close. I would oh yeah, think. Martz is Martz is scary too. I think the beard adds a couple inches yeah. of height to him too if he's growing that. I think so up. for sure. Yeah. So uh, seeing seeing the names on this roster uh, that really excite me. Obviously the return, uh, McQueen, like the, the big names from last year, McQueen, Martinelli. Uh, we got obviously Sagrat, Raymond. We got. Uh, we got so coming back here. We got Taps. Uh, we got McGuffin. We got Captain Rebs. We got Mitch Fitzmorris. Uh, we got Braden Roberts, Justin Abraham, uh, Kane Geldy. We got Derek Slot, Barletta, uh, and Finn. So uh, a long list. Like that's that's awesome to see that in this league. You don't see a lot of teams that were our caliber that add that returned that many guys and also added some really talented players as well. So. Um, yeah, we're, we're we're I think we've signed thirty cards already, and you know it makes yeah. it. Uh, and there's a few more to come yet. It make what it, at this level, as you guys know, twenty guys is not enough. No, no, um, no. got to have five lines of forwards and eight or nine, ten defensemen and Absolutely. three or four goalies. Injuries happen, work happens, Absolutely. school happens. Yep. Um, you know, family functions, that sort of thing. It's it is a working what I like to call a working man's league, right? Absolutely. So, um, the challenge, obviously, when you have this much talent, because a lot of these young guys coming in are damn good too. Oh yeah. Uh, when you have this much talent, it's it's going to be keeping everybody on the ice, keeping them happy, and keeping the balance. Because you know we've got a lot of strong veterans too, right? So Absolutely. It's, it's bringing in the the mix of young legs and and senior legs, and uh, mm -hmm. you know making everybody happy. And that's always a challenge at this level. And you know my job as the GM is to get them there and. You know, give the coaches the the pieces they need, and the coach's job is to to meld it all together and get get it cohesive and make it all work, right? For sure, that kind of was perfect that you led me into that next question. Um, so, how did the process come about with the bringing in of Sean Ebden and his crew? Uh, did you play a major role in that? Did Holly play a major role in that? Um, well, we uh, we really just kind of put it out there that we were looking, and then uh, you know, Sean reached out to us, right? Mm -hmm. So. You know, he had some some coaching background in Norwich and, and Port Stan or mm -hmm. Port Dover, sorry, yeah. Port Dover, and uh, you know, coaching various levels of minor hockey as well. And uh, you know, some conversations, a couple of conversations led to, one thing led to another, and then he had some some friends in Kitch and uh, and Freddie Maybe that uh, wanted to come in and help. And you know, Freddie Maybe's a, a Tilsburg born and raised boy living in Delhi now. That's you know, a former NCAA goaltender. So you know, he brings some experience as well. So. And Kitch, I'm sure Kitch played the game at a very level, very high level. But he's a good communicator. Form, or he's a police officer, so yep. you can keep guys in line and maybe fix a ticket or two. You know, yeah. So. I was gonna say, <laughs> <laughs> I know who to, I know whose name to drop next time. Uh, I see the cherries behind me. So but that's, yeah. that's that's really good. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what they're able to do in terms of doing their part and getting this team to gel and mash. And I know one of the areas we noticed as fans last year, and it's it's 
it's senior A hockey, right? It's it's difficult, but but penalty kill was definitely a tough area in the postseason last year, and uh, sure. in, in conversation with him. That's one of the major areas he wants to improve is, is the special, penalty kill. Special teams let us down a little bit in the playoffs last Absolutely. year, but a lot of that also had to do with healthy pieces. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you got to have, have all your pieces ready and suspensions and everything ready to go. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's a long season, right? That's why you need, like I said, you need a roster of, of 27 to 30 guys. and uh, Absolutely. Because all of the things that do happen and, you know, some He's guys in middle of the middle of the year get a job change or a yeah. – or shift change or something, and the next thing you know, they can only play seven or eight, ten games, right? Mm-hmm. So, absolutely, that's, that's definitely it, one at of the... this. At this level, I've always told our coaches, you know, not to expect twenty-four games out of the guys. If you get fifteen or sixteen out of your guys, that's a full season. Absolutely, and as long as they can show up for for the postseason as well as much as possible. Exactly. It's, uh, you, yeah, you don't want them using vacation time or brownie points with the wife for the regular season games. No, you need exactly. those for the playoffs. You really so. need those because when you're taking a Tuesday. An evening trip to Tilbury for Game Six or Game Seven. It's, exactly. You definitely need the wife to be approving of that one and the job to say okay. Um, exactly. I want to ask you about a guy that we didn't even know was skating with the team, uh, but we saw him play in the preseason, and uh, Ebsy put him on a line with uh, Gus Ford, Tilsonburg legend. Hopefully, one day he does eventually uh, make the shift over to this beautiful team. Look at these jerseys, Gus. Aren't they just beautiful? But, uh, <laughs> once, he, once he loses that pro hockey dream and he comes back home, we'll get him. Absolutely. Well, he can continue that pro <laughs> hockey dream with this team because uh, you guys seem to put it on the ice. But uh, yeah. he played with uh, Quoto and uh, and Gus Ford. Uh, number 21, Spencer Hutchison. Um, uh, I just wanted to kind of know the process you guys went into. To, did, did he come to a, Did he get invited or did he just come out? And uh, did he really so, yeah, impress you guys? At this level, a lot of a lot of your recruiting is just your players letting their buddies know what they're doing. Absolutely, and talking to them. So Spencer Hutchison is is a police officer in London as well, mm-hmm. and him and Martin Elliott are on the same shift. Okay, yeah, and they're they're very well acquainted with each other. So Spencer used to be you know the the captain in St. Thomas of the Junior B team there, yep. and yep. I'll tell you that that wrist shot he scored was a rocket on the in that exhibition game. I hope to see lots of that. So Absolutely. Like so I said, we got another... I think he might have popped a couple that game, actually. I already, but, uh, I already technically got his jersey on him, so uh, I know uh, JB <laughs> wore this thing, but to have 21. Yeah. And uh, guys who wear 21 for the Thunder seem to have a rifle of a wrist shot. So I, I really like I think there's something about it. I'm, if he can do it half as well for us as JB did, I think we'll be very well. Absolutely. Especially with all the additions. As you said, uh, you guys added some, some young guys, some guys that uh, came locally... But but we're studs uh, at that at their level, uh, like Kyle Baker, and uh, Brzezinski and Forsyth, uh, Austin Forsyth, uh, Wyatt Like these are some young guys that have some, they're really talented. Like and uh, they they seem to bring some speed to the team. And they've been pleasant surprises, and uh, they certainly have foot speed that is very important at this level. And and young legs, as I told a player tonight when we were chatting, we yeah. we need those long young legs in long seasons, right? So, Absolutely, it's it's, um, it's one of the biggest things you need. Baker's only skated with us a couple times, but I think he's gonna gonna turn some heads once he's ready to go. Yep, for sure. Um, you know, he's, he's signed and committed. He just needs to get on the ice a little bit. Yep. Um, you know, got, you know, guy like Forsyth is is a kid with just a, a great motor, can really go, good set of hands, mm-hmm. um, produced at both the junior B and junior C level very well. So mm-hmm. really I suspect uh, once he gets used to the game at this level, which is played a little different, thought a little different, and uh, he'll fit in real well. Uh, we'll see him making his. His debut on Saturday night for sure. So, um, looking forward to it. Well, we saw. I wanted to ask you as well. We saw obviously the bringing back of. That's why I'm wearing the hat tonight. Uh, Mike Finley. Uh, he's been with the team for, I mean, literally ha- half my years of being on Earth. So, um, it, it's incredible. You also, like I said, we brought you. You got you bring back these veteran players. What as the general manager? What do you see in terms of those older guys helping teach these younger guys the senior level because it's a whole different game. It is. It's a. It's a. It's a smarter game. The the puck does the work more than the legs, right? Absolutely. Now you need the legs, obviously, all the time. But you know, you gotta you gotta think the game a little differently at this this level. And and you know, a lot of guys don't realize how much of a hidden gem this level of hockey is, right? Mm-hmm. You no, know, they uh, they snap the puck around pretty good, and they they move the puck around smartly as opposed to overworking. And you know, veterans like Finley and a Chris McGuffin and even a Jamie McQueen, an old pro, they understand that the the game is more smart. Mm-hmm. At this level, than it is say at the the junior C level where it's a little more individually talented. Mm-hmm. Guys, you know, work, work their butts off, right? And but uh, yeah, Finns is. I think he's here just chasing that one more championship. And so uh, 
hopefully he uh, hopefully he gets it this year, but he still decides to keep going. But mm-hmm. if he doesn't, uh, you know, hats off to him. But absolutely, what a career! Um, He's... In year one of the Thunder in two thousand and eight, he was our leading scorer. So. Yep, and I was 10 years old, so <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been shooting a podcast back then. But, but if uh, you're looking for you're looking for a penalty killing defense, when you don't find too many better than Finley at killing the penalty. Absolutely, and we were, we were mentioning it uh, just off the record before uh, the the game in Delhi, and uh, you, it's hard to piss Finn off. I noticed, but there are some oh, yeah. th- there's some things that happen that game, and Finn laid a hit in the corner, and I was standing on the opposite corner, so this was in the far. This would be the right corner of the defensive zone. And the whole boards shook all the way around and almost knocked my my sprite bottle off the glass all the way around the other side. Like he's he's he brings that that leadership. There's a story behind that hit that I'm not going to go into on camera. That's okay. We'll have a little, little <laughs> chat afterwards about that. But one. Uh, that was uh, that was Finns being Finns. He stood. He was standing up for a teammate. Absolutely. And it was uh, the hit was uh, provided at that extra heavy level for. For the sake of a teammate, absolutely. let's just leave it at that. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is that he's a leader, right? And yeah, absolutely. And I knew that hit was had some intent and was sending a message, yeah. and the message was accepted and received in quite the the fashion that you would expect it to be. So also, I wanted to, and the junior B, just so you know, he was a very heavy. He was a bruiser, big, heavy-handed oh, bruiser. Oh yeah. That's right, so. Oh yeah. We've looked at we've looked it, into his past before. His, uh, <laughs> his, his game has certainly changed uh, now, but I, you know, he's one of those guys that are on the ice. You respect him, but you don't want to cross him. Well, exactly. Well, and you know what? He gets stuck watching this crappy hockey team with me. So, you know what? He he wants to go out there, and you know what? He he provides more entertainment than these guys do every night. So, there you um, go. <laughs> but no, thanks. And welcome for uh, welcome back to uh, Finn. And just one last quick touch on the roster, and then we'll let you go because uh, it's around supper time, and we're all getting hungry. Um, Mike Redbury, captain. Uh, he's coming back. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the whole situation with the eye last year. I just wanted to see what, who who made that final decision, and uh, is he a hundred percent? Do you feel, or is there something still in his head? Like, uh, do you see this no, going to be a good year for him? I think he's. I think he's healthy. I think he's had a little bit of a a long term issue with a like. A, I think he said a floater in the eye, but I haven't yeah. really talked too much about the eye this year. Yeah. Um, you know, he it certainly didn't affect him much in the playoffs last year. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. Um, but you know, he's got the talent to go along go along with uh, to be able to adapt but he's back this year how much he's going to be able to play it really depends he's got young kids and the uh, swing shift job so it'd be like any season of rebs it'll be that 10 to 14 regular season games probably yeah. and uh, and then you know in playoffs he'll find he'll find a way to be as committed as possible absolutely so. and that's why he wears the c is but the when fact he, of... he's on the ice he uh, he doesn't leave anything behind typically. exactly that's that's kind of where i was getting at with that with wearing the c it's, a, it's something you earn, and he definitely has earned that 100% with this organization. And he was a huge inspiration to us, seeing him come out, because we, we didn't know, obviously, the details of the injury. We saw the injury happen in Stratford and the blood, and, and then, you know, he comes out in an elimination game wearing a stinking face bubble, and, and, and you're just, and he put on a show that game. Like, he, I saw he switched to the actual cage afterwards, because it's a little bit uncomfortable with those... Uh, what do you call them? Yeah, fish bubbles. Balls? Yeah, fish yeah balls. I don't really like him personally, but he uh, he put on a show and he showed why he wears the C, right? So I've seen him take the team on his hands, uh, take the team in his own hands in the playoffs many times before. He did that in a series up in Soggy Shores about I don't know three, four, five years ago, where uh, you know we were struggling a little bit at first, and he just decided it was time to turn it on, and he turned. You know, and people follow effort, right? Absolutely, so, absolutely. Yeah. The other guys are going to; these young guys are going to see. And even some of the other veterans are going to see the effort that he puts in. And like you said, he's only going to be able to be there 10, 11, 12 games. But the games he's there, he's wearing that C, he's proud, and he's going to help these young guys adapt and and uh, and, and ultimately provide what we as fans and analysts or podcast hosts, whatever you want to call it, what we want to see. And you know what, that's kind of our last point, and we'll, uh, we'll let you get away, Bill. Uh, we just wanted to chat with all the fans one more time about October 7th, this upcoming Saturday. So podcast, second half of episode one with interviews with the president and owner of the Thunder and as well the general manager and a senior executive with the Thunder uh, and the league, the Western Ontario Super Hockey League, is set to release Friday, October 6th. And that also coincides with the Thunder's home opener, which I have to also store my voice away for because I will be doing play-by-play and it's slowly going away. That's going to be Saturday, October 7th, uh, 7.30 p.m. puck drop. Get there early. Let's bring the noise. There's a special giveaway, uh, which I was wondering if you wanted to touch base because I figured you'd know a little bit uh, about the giveaway, Bill. Uh, yeah, so actually my wife came up with it. That's um, what I'm going to ask. 
Uh, yeah, so as you know, we've got uh, several of years behind us with jerseys. So mm -hmm. uh, I think I have about eight or nine at my house here alone. So um, what we've decided is, uh, you know, let's get the crowd out. Let's see if we can get them in, in, in the Thunder Colors, mm -hmm. providing some support for the home opener, and then uh, pick a winner, give them a give them a previously worn, previously loved Thunder jersey and uh, and some tickets to a future game and uh, for supporting the team. So hopefully, hopefully the colors come out in full force. Absolutely, that's the plan. Let's go Thunder. We're going to have the drum. I'll be uh, in the booth, but Dad and this guy right here will be providing the drum work. Uh, Perfect. Provided they don't break through the drum because we actually had a couple chats with some people after the exhibition game that were very disappointed that I didn't have the drum. And uh, so we had a couple of eight, nine, ten-year-old kids above us starting yep. the Let's Go Thunder, banging on their seats, and then I heard one of them say, where's your drum? So I apologize. Oh, if, we need a, if we need a better drum skin, let me know. I might know a guy who can help you out. All right. I think we'll uh, definitely have to be in touch. I think we need uh, about an eight-foot drum uh, out in the middle of the arena. But no, thank you so much for uh, joining us, Bill. Thank you. Uh, you. You do a great job, as we said. Uh, Best general thank manager you. in the league. I don't care what Petrie says. You're the best general manager in the league. Uh, <laughs> I just had, to, just had to rub that one in. But uh, we're end really the, looking forward the, to it. end of the day, I don't do it for kudos. I do it because I enjoy it, and I love Absolutely. the company. That's part of it, and uh, I appreciate what you guys are doing. Absolutely. Thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight, Bill. You take care, and uh, we'll be in touch. As we said, Thunder, 730 Saturday against Petrolia, old school rival. Can't wait to see it. Thanks again for watching and listening to Thunder Hour. This is going to conclude our show. Uh, pleasant good night from Trey Hamilton, my partner in crime, Leaf Dietrich, and Mr. Bill Ryan. Welcome back to Thunder Hour. This is our second episode, and uh, as we touched on last week, we are we were teasing the uh, joining in studio of a couple of guests. Uh, unfortunately, one of the two guests couldn't join us live, but we will get to that segment following this one. But we were able to be joined live in studio by a very special guest today. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, Mr. Mike Holly? Thanks, Trey. Thanks, thanks, Leaf. Uh, I'm Mike Holly. I'm president, owner, chief bottle washer of the Thunder. I guess. Absolutely, that's a pretty good role to have, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Being being the owner of uh, such a storied franchise that has the history that it has, and uh, that was one of the things that we were super excited to have you on. Is that you you and Bill are the two business partners that that make this thing work. So so we wanted to have you guys on as our first guests officially on the show to be able to show the, pre the appreciation we have for you guys, as well as get the fans an inside, uh, never, be never before seen look at uh, what makes the Thunder operate, what makes the, the clock tick, so to speak. And uh, you're, you're, we'd just like to ask what, how you would describe your own role, Mike, uh, within the organization and what's expected of you versus also how you make your side of the operation operate on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, Bill and I work very much in tandem. Uh, Bill handles the hockey side of it, I handle the business side of it. Uh, to who reports to who, we don't have that qualified roles. Um, the, uh, I, I handle the volunteers, he builds very good at getting the players. As you can tell by you know a couple of championships, um, losing in the, in the finals a couple of times, we're, we're all, Thunder's always there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's an important part. Absolutely, uh, you guys have always put together a competitive product on the ice and that's what draw drew the fans like ourselves and my dad and others to the game was uh, just come out, get butts in the seats. They'll be able to see the product on the ice and appreciate it. And that's uh, why we owe you guys a lot of credit. Is like I said, it's Tulsaburg's a small town, it's a small market, but you guys obviously with the WOAA when you guys were in that league, it was a small market focused league. And now that we're moving in kind of a similar direction with the Western Ontario Super League and what is going to be the OSHL. Uh, it's still a focus on small markets, but some people wouldn't assume that a town like Tulsaburg is able to put together a team that is competitive year after year, and you guys are able to do it. So I just wanted to ask, I know Bill's the guy who signs on the dotted line, but what, what in your perspective draws players, what connections do you guys have, what brings guys to Tilsonburg? Is it an organizational thing? Is it a, a history thing? Uh, what, what's your view on that, Mike? I think we, la we run a pretty classy organization. Um, there are a number of teams in there, and some of them are excellent organizations, but I still consider Tilsonburg the premier um, organization in, in, in Wassel. Uh, he has a little bit of bravado, and I'm sure a couple people will disagree, but we'll go with that. The, um, we've been around for 16 years. This is our 16th year. Yeah. Uh, the only one left, of course, is Mike Finley. Yeah. Uh, he's the Iron Man. I think he's going to go for another 16 the way he's going now. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're pr pretty impressed with that. Yeah. 
Um, did you want to get into how it all started again? You mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, so so we we're going to ask you and uh, start at the beginning. So yeah, let's uh, let's ask you. So how? When I was young, I, I was mentioned that on our first episode. I went to a Squires game when I was six, seven years old, and one of the games I saw was against a team called the Tilsburg Vipers. Yeah. And from my understanding, the Vipers transitioned through your ownership into the Thunder. So if you want to kind of explain the timing and how the Thunder came to be, uh, nicknames, I, everything like that. Actually, that's not 100% right. Okay. What happened, Tilsburg, uh, Tilsburg Vipers run by uh, Dan Sanders in the AAA loop in the OHA. Okay. Um, that basically is an independent organization and nothing to do with the Thunder. How I found out about it, like I used to go with my sons to the game periodically. Um, it was good hockey, a lot of tape to tape. I call it a European style as opposed to a Canadian style, which is more more bump and grind. And we go with a couple games, and it was fun to watch. Um, one day, I, you know, I'm a goalie. I try hard. Um, so we'll move on from that. Anyway, yeah, so um, I, we were playing on community, and we were behind. So the Vipers were playing on Memorial. So I strangled over there to your know, dressing room three is. Mm-hmm. And I'm standing there, and I'm just watching some of the game. I don't have my bucket and gloves on, but um, there's a rather well-dressed man standing beside me. And we started talking back and forth. I talked to everybody. And um, he starts talking about, ah, oh, it's too bad the Til- Tilsburg folding, you know. And, it, you know, we always counted on two points here anyway. And uh, you know, who would want to live in this crummy town? He's going on and on. Like, he doesn't know me. Yeah. Well, it turns out it was Peter Ham, the owner of the Brantford Blast. Okay. And, um, you know, it just didn't sit right with me. Mm-hmm. So I went and played. And after we are playing the dressing room, I asked if any, you know, if anybody goes to Viper's game. And they had pretty, pretty much the same impression I did. It was good hockey. Like, there's some serious talent there. But it was more, they wanted to see Don Sherry, lunch bucket style, and it didn't have to be scraps, but finish your check. Mm-hmm. You know, work hard. Mm-hmm. And that's what they wanted to see. Mm-hmm. So I called up Dan the next day. I said, want to talk hockey? And he said, come on over. I sat down in his office. First thing he did, he slid the financials over me. Mm-hmm. I looked at him, and, and he says, you interested? I go, not at those numbers. Mm-hmm. Dan Sanders should be sainted. For him to put it through the amount of years he did, like he's a great guy uh, the remax is a big sponsor of the team have been from the beginning yep. um and so what happened was i called an executive meeting together mm-hmm. with all the vipers and because i was looking at it and and you know my wife and i are very involved in charity things in tilsburg i'm a knight she's president of cwl mm-hmm. um we've always done that and um dan says he doesn't call executive meetings and i said why not he said the last one we had a fight to fist fight I go, that's not going to happen in my meetings. <laughs> so we got there, and there was about 20 people involved. And, um, you know, I was looking for, you know, we were, we, had, we had kind of found, well, I actually hadn't found the WA at that point, but I was looking for a GM was the key. And um, some people had different uh, different ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody had their little fiefdoms. Um, I don't work that way. One day, yeah, I'm president, but I also, uh, this next game, I'll be taking tickets at the front because we're showing on volunteers. Yeah change the garbage cans if we have to. It's just everybody's a team. Uh, Thunder's an org- organization of volunteers, and that's the way it'll always be. Uh, we have a lot of good good time, cost me beer and pizza, and a lot of beer, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah I, I saw you on the on the payroll these days. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, Anyways, yeah. Um, so we started talking, and Dan Hamilton, he was, oh, yeah, this is great, stuff like that. Took him in the community when we took a break and said, you want to be GM? He said, well, what? Dan Hamilton was equipment manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rink Rad is what he knows, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And he dove in f- um, f- uh, feet first. Yep. H- half the people actually, once they found out Dan was Ham- uh, going to be GM, they quit. Because Dan was a rough guy. Yeah. Um, so I seem to have that ten- trend with GMs. But yeah. I get along with those guys. Pretty <laughs> good. Anyways, so um, we well, just started out. We, uh, Dad and I, our first, me- our first meeting of the team was on, on, on my picnic, picnic table in, on our, in my back deck. Talking about what we had to do, we found the WOA. It was the type of hockey we wanted to see, mm-hmm. and you know, that's kind of where where we went. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went through there. We had a full one year. We had a full, uh, they won the double A championship. Next year we won the A championship. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, the transition to the WOSHL. Uh, you want to go that way now? Yeah. Let's, okay. Let's, let's go. What, what's Good, your perspective uh, on that? Like how how the folding ultimately it's happened now with the WOA. What. Uh, what was, I know Bill played a huge role, so did uh, Petrie up there in Stratford. Um, so what, what was your view of taking your team and jumping into a league that was new and, and you, ju- you just probably didn't know what to expect and probably didn't expect it to do the things we've seen? But, yeah, what's your perspective on that? It wasn't an easy move. Mm-hmm. Um, the important part was to make sure my team had a place to play next year. 
uh, the, um, the the looking at a different league, actually even going to the OHA mm-hmm. uh, when we were in WHA, W the WO. Um, I had talked to many of the teams four or five years before that, mm-hmm. and none of them wanted to do it. Mm-hmm. So you know we kind of let it go and stuff like that. The um, you know WOA was it was a good league. We learned a lot, mm-hmm. um, but they needed to move and did something like what we're doing here with podcasts. Mm-hmm. And, you know we live dot Wassel will live streams all the games. Mm-hmm. That's so important. Absolutely. Um, you know you t- you talk to the fans. Mm-hmm. You know you show them what's going on. Exactly. The guys that can go on on a, on a on a road game, they, you know, they can see what their team is doing. Absolutely. So, um, when we had the COVID came, mm-hmm. and um, they they were boarding in Stratford, and uh, got turned down. Yeah. Why it got turned down? I'm not 100 percent sure. Mm-hmm. I don't think the t- close teams that were close to them really wanted a team that close to them because yeah. they, they drew some a lot of players for Stratford. Absolutely. So um, Bill and I were talking, we're sitting there, and I said because we heard that Jamie was um, thinking about putting another league together, mm-hmm. so we called him up. And the first meeting for Wassel was actually in my living room. Yep. Ja- Jamie, uh, Dan, um, Dave came, I'm sorry, from Stratford, uh, Bill and I, we talked about a league. Yep. And um, that's kind of where it all started. Mm-hmm. It's been an interesting ride. Um, the, the league is just so progressive. Absolutely. It looks at, um, you know, uh, fan involvement. Mm-hmm. Um, the fans last year were fantastic. Oh, it was amazing. Like, uh, I had, other, than the, other than the results, I'm tired of being the, br- the bridesmaid. Yeah, second um, place is Yeah, the second place sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, second place twice sucks, twi- mm-hmm. ten times more. Back to back, yeah. So <laughs> we're going to do something about yeah, that. Yeah. Teams, uh, days, um, Bill's put a fantastic team together. Absolutely, um, but he does it every year. Absolutely, you know, last year the the Tilbury ser- series, I don't, I had never seen such good hockey. <laughs> no. It was incredible. But, but we came out of that. We had how many guys separated shoulders, concussions? There, yeah. there were games Stratford. We had one defenseman. Yeah, oh, we I signed remember. nine before that. Yeah, and it's just yeah. the way it went. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, the additions of Petrolia and Dunville, oh, um, yeah. that that's excellent. Um, I love going to Petrolia. Oh yeah. Matter of fact, we got Petrolia for our home opener this Saturday. Yep. That's and uh, Petrolia is not this quite the same team on the road. No. Um, but the Tulsa Petrolia have a history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I love going to Petrolia because mm-hmm. Petrolia were the bad guys. Oh yeah. I love being the bad guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was going to ask you about that with with the Squires rejoining the league, and I saw your comments on uh, on Facebook about. Uh, this will be the only time that you'll see the uh, Squires ahead of the Thunder in the standings. I was, I was loving that. Are you? What are you seeing for this first game? Are you? Are you seeing it? Because a lot of these guys, outside of Finley and I uh, Redbury, obviously guys that have been there for a while, Taps. A lot of these guys don't know that rivalry. Do you think they're going to be freshly introduced into it, or do you think it's going to be a whole new perspective of the rivalry now that we're part of a new league? Well, hopefully we regenerate it. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we're not a scrapping team. Nope. I don't believe in you know, it, guys defend yourself. Absolutely. But you know, we're a skating team. We're a high end team. Mm-hmm. Um, defend yourself. And do I think Petrolia will come out like that? Probably not. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the guys like Cole and Bearclaw and stuff like that, they're not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I went to the um, Orangeville uh, Petrolia game last weekend. Yep. And Petrolia, Petrolia is not a bad team. No. You know, they they have a number of years too, so you know you got some veterans on there. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of the newer teams, they have to learn the senior hockey because mm-hmm, it's, it's not the same as junior. Not even close. No. Yeah. So, you know, they have to learn that. Mm-hmm. Would it be nice to revive it? I imagine it, it will mm-hmm. because, you know, Tilsburg, Petrolia, through the Silver Stick, they always seem to come together and they all know them and they all know us. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of the way that works. Absolutely. Because, um, yeah, we're, we're really looking forward to it. It'll be my first chance. Uh, I'll be with Gavin in the calling the game as well. So that'll be a great way to introduce myself in the booth uh, mm-hmm. to be able to call a game against a history rival with, with Tilsonburg. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm really looking forward to it. So um, that was one thing I wanted to touch on. I also wanted to ask you about, you You ended up mentioning it, that you were there. What, what What's your view on the Squires this year? Uh, just just the roster they've constructed. And do you feel, because they're not, they're not an expansion team necessarily mm-hmm. like Delhi and Dunville where they have to build around their local junior C and local guys. This is a team that's established. So, mm-hmm. do you see them being more, more or less, not as good as Tilbury was last year, uh, but but kind of fitting in and fighting for a mid-grade playoff spot this year versus what you we saw from Delhi and what we'll probably see from Dunville this year. Well, one of the questions you, we haven't asked yet is what are the expectations for the Thunder? Yeah, that's. Um, I, I never go into a game first place mm-hmm. in the championship why, why else would you play it absolutely all right yeah. that's the expectations mm-hmm. and i actually had a player ask me that once and i said well we're here to win this yeah you know why are you dressing if you're not doing exactly. that way exactly. um 
the game the game with the Wassel is very similar to the WA, mm-hmm. uh, so you know Petrolia should fit in. Um, I gotta be. I don't want to give them any uh, incentive. No. So we're not gonna. I'll never say anything bad against any team. No. Because you know to put a team together and to have them on the ice is you yeah. know you, all the management teams. It should, takes a lot. It oh, takes yeah. a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know they always say how much work do you do during the season? I go hardly any during the season. I've been working my tail off all summer. Exactly. You got to put your sponsorships, your promotions together, and yeah. all this other stuff. Yeah. Um, how are we gonna get do a Petrolia? Um, I expect to win. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, I don't. I haven't seen the point spread yet. Yep. But, <laughs> yeah, but, um, we'll be releasing that later. Well, we'll try week. to keep it under a touchdown, hopefully. But our lineup is f- stellar. Absolutely, we've yes. added some great things, and you know, Bill will talk to that more than I can. Yeah, yeah, we'll um, talk with Bill about the the new signings and. Um, you know, uh, we got like I was look. I just went through the roster, and yeah. we have ten new guys. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And we have nineteen returning, and probably twenty because another yeah. one just hasn't committed yet. Yeah. We turn typically we turn over a third of the roster, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's always a good thing to do because what you do, the veterans like the the Finleys. Um, you know the Rebs and all this other stuff mm-hmm. what they basically do is they teach your junior C your junior B guys the senior game mm-hmm. you know the junior A guys got a little less of a step mm-hmm. you know McQueen's back mm-hmm. we're excited about that oh, yeah, he was a, yeah. he's a top player oh yeah um, actually I, I can go down the list and just list all the top players yeah. Uh, we have both Geldies back. Yep. Um, so, you know, he came, he moved back with his brother in London, so now he's back with the Thunder. Mm-hmm. So we're happy to have that mm-hmm. defenseman back. Mm-hmm. Uh, the... Um, what to say not to give Petrolia any incentive Yeah, well, here. We're, not, we're not allowed to give Petrolia any incentive. There but, you go. But I, we both predicted uh, on our last episode uh, a win for, for Tilsonburg, and that was before the 10-2 uh, spanking of Orangeville. But that doesn't still... It still doesn't change the perspective of us that it's... I think that the Thunder are are clearly over the past two seasons we've shown we're a top four team in this league and it's going to be that way for a long time. So mm-hmm. I, I don't see Petrolia being a top four team in this league and that's no slight on them. It's their first year, but just talent wise, overall roster construction, I feel that we're definitely going to come out on top. But that's for us to guess and for the players to go and ultimately determine, right? So see, but I want to ask one well, quick well, question. Right, so about, just going back to where you mentioned no what Petrolia is going to be, uh, you have Alveston and Strathroy close. Mm-hmm. You look at the advantages of um, Tilbury or Dunville. Yeah, you know they have a really a lot of area to draw upon. If you if you if you live in Windsor, you're playing for Tilbury. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you play in Niagara Falls, you're probably playing for Dunville. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, when we were in the WA, we were the most southern team, mm-hmm. so we had advantages because we could draw off all the all mm-hmm. the south. We have teams that are close. That's the risk of putting you know having Plasville move to Woodstock. Now yep. we have Delhi. Yeah. Um, you know there's some teams that are close. And players have options. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the way we attract players is just put a class organization there. Yep. We treat our players well. Mm-hmm. We treat our volunteers well. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and we win. Mm-hmm. As Absolutely. for top four, that's not good enough. Top. It's got to be number one. Number one. one. That's number all. That's really that's, acceptable. We're waiting for it. So. And as for predictions of games, you know, you you guess the only top first game was a win. No, there should be twenty four wins. Oh, there. I hope so. That's that's what we're betting on. <laughs> I mean, we. Uh, I wanted to ask quick too before I lost the train of thought was, um, with you being the owner and president of this team, um, what was your what was your role in allowing Zerzi and the guys to move from Plattsville to Woodstock? Because that's I we, I come here from Tilsonburg to record i work here in woodstock it's a 25 minute drive top so yeah. so what was that what was your role in making that decision and ultimately giving them the green light because i think it was a good move and did you guys at all feel that it would impact two three years down the road at player signings and things like that like it must have been a tough decision because now you have three teams mm-hmm. almost within 20 minutes of each other so yeah. and and but you know you have to you have two hats Mm-hmm. Like obviously we're talking Thunder hats. We're all wearing the right jerseys mm-hmm. and all this yeah. other stuff. Mm-hmm. Although we gotta do something with that Phillies hat. Hey, um, <laughs> Finn, don't worry, I got you. Uh, we're gonna do something that for you. Anyway, <laughs> um, you also have to have the your league hat on. Yeah. Um, Plattsville, Aaron, were not good markets. No. And I understand they took that place is to get the ice because ice time is tough to get these it days. Is. Yeah, it is. Um, moving to Woodstock, you know, I'm hoping that'll make Plattsville a stronger, a stronger organization. Uh, we uh, Tilsonburg has always sent players like you, we, you know we have a tough roster to crack, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. and there's a lot of guys that we don't sign that can easily make other teams, mm-hmm. yeah, and sure. we'll, we send them to the other teams. Mm-hmm. And you know Bill does that all the time. He's 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 one of the uh, leaders in, in doing all that. Yeah, Aaron he couldn't even practice on their own ice. 
Yeah. You know, I think I heard they had like a half a two thirds ice or whatever. It's yeah. camp practice, right? No, Move to Orangeville. Orangeville is a big market. Mm-hmm. Um, with the point system that that we use now, with the maximum thirteen points on the ice, which by the way, Bill uh, Bill um, orchestrated that with the WOA yeah. years ago. Yeah. They couldn't figure it out, so it didn't happen. Then it came again. Then the third year, they finally brought it in. Yeah. Because you know we used to have basically a five import rule. Yeah. And you have teams, rich teams, like you know all the radars. Um, they're not around anymore. In, in Clinton, where you could pay guys three, four, five hundred dollars a game, mm-hmm. we give guys some gas money. Mm-hmm. You know, we yeah. can't give guys three, four hundred dollars no, a game. Exactly. You just can't do it. You're, you guys are already, you're not making money with oh. this organization as it is because it's a nonprofit and it costs a lot of money for refs. And, and as you said, you cover travel expenses and you have to factor in volunteers and, and buy beer and all that, all that. Because that was kind of one of the questions I wanted you to ask was. Was what all goes into yeah. the the operations of a game because you are the one who kind of oversees that. Bill puts the players on the ice. You make sure everything runs smooth. So what? How many volunteers overall from front to back? People that we don't even see at these games. What goes into making a Thunder game from six o'clock at night till ten thirty at night? How how many people does it take? And what what does it take for you to coordinate all of that? Uh, just to run one game, like just explain it for the fans who wouldn't yeah. understand. Well, it, it varies from game to game, and we're short on volunteers for the first game being uh, uh, Thanksgiving. But you know, you have Dave. Dave, that's in the. Um, he does the music. Mm-hmm. You have uh, Jim McDonald. He does the annou- announcing during the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, Mike Hardy. He does the time clock. That's mm-hmm. the toughest one. Oh, yes. I, I do that once in a while. And mess it up pretty good. <laughs> uh, we have you know, um, Sean Attridge. He does the the. the the um, game sheet. Yeah. Uh, we have three people on the 50 50 because mm-hmm. um, I can get pretty busy at times. Absolutely. Um, then you you have, well, at Mike Attridge is the trainer. He's there. We have a new a new girl uh, um, that's just come on. She's a, a massage therapist in, in Tilsburg called us and says, Yeah, I want to help. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. um, then you have uh, Scott Harrison. He does the, um, you know, he is trader, equipment manager. Uh, he has a number of roles. Uh, Bill, of course, is GM. You have Pat, who is also the assistant GM. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you deal with the bar. Mm-hmm. Um, you you usually have at least two bartenders, and you have somebody on the money. Mm-hmm. Um, they're wearing a brand new Thunder jersey. Yeah, yep. brand new. Um, I like it. We, you can order these now. Mm-hmm. Um, these are good. They're all embroidered. They're they're fantastic. Oh, they look fantastic. You can get the cheaper ones that, that the uh, the um, which are sublimated. You guys are wearing the sublimated yep. ones. Um, they're sixty bucks. These are ninety bucks. Mm-hmm. For the extra uh, thirty, I think it's worth it. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. The, these are. You did a great job. Beautiful. Um, you have the gold. You have the white. You have the black. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the you know it's a different logo here. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's on the golds. Yeah. Um, the one you have there is on the homes. Mm-hmm. And the blacks um, just have the word Tilsonberg across. Yep. Yeah. Just Tilsonberg across the chest. I, so, I like the design. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was, so it was really well done. Yeah. But, Joe, my wife usually runs a bar. She actually doesn't like hockey at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, she told me about that. Yeah, yeah, I remember she, having she, that chat with her. Yeah, so, you know, she she has a number of people that volunteer there. Mm-hmm. My mom's involved. It's always been a family mm-hmm. affair. Absolutely. Um, my, my dad and my mom used to do all the uh, ticket sales mm-hmm. at the beginning until he passed away. Mm-hmm. And then we have other people helping out. Mm-hmm. We have people like yourself, mm-hmm. like, you know, getting involved, doing play-by-plays. Yep. We have a, co- you know, John with, with, the color, mm-hmm. with the color. I hope I didn't forget anybody. Um, <laughs> it's it's quite I, the list is so long that it's it's incredible it, to even think about. But you right? know they they all know their stuff. Absolutely. You know I I, I get there right and I usually get I slug all the beer in from my yeah. car. Yeah. And by that time you know the guys show up they know where to go. Mm-hmm. But, you know and it, it just runs a, like a well oil machine. Absolutely. And the players understand that. Absolutely. You know they they come in you know we have uh, towels from um, the ho- hotel they basically gave us towels mm-hmm. the, the players got a new. Uh, t- towels every well for every time to have shower after and all that mm-hmm. stuff, mm-hmm. Um, tape and st- you know we give some sticks out. I even give the guys gum and, sh- and shampoo. Mm-hmm. When I first started the organization, you could we could gum and shampoo. I go, I didn't, I didn't. Oh, hey, <laughs> 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 I play hockey too, and I bring my own shampoo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, that's just kind of the way it works, mm-hmm. and it's it's pretty smooth. It's a very smooth organization. Yeah. yeah, that's one of the things we we were so attracted to about the Thunder was was that everything just seemed to. To, to be in place and, yep. and and when you go to a Thunder game if you've never been to a Thunder game um, you're you're walking into what you will find out quickly is a professional hockey game you're walking in music's well done announcing's well done <coughs> I'm just oh, kidding yeah. announcing's well done uh, the the crowd in Tilsonburg I wanted to ask also ask you a question on that but we'll touch on that after this quick but but if you're if you've never been to a Thunder game if you're from out of town if you come to Tilsonburg uh, Memorial Arena and watch a game, you will leave 
wanting to come back because yeah. things are well done. The construction of our arena is absolutely beautiful. It's a it's an NHL style half bowl with a full NHL size pad. Yeah. Like it's it's things are crisp and the product on the ice itself is amazing. But just being at the game, the presentation of things. Uh, obviously, in this league, you're not going to see video boards and 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 big jumbotrons and stuff. But for what we have in Tilsonburg, I think it's the best in the league. Personally, after going to every arena except Alora because they were in Fergus last year, um, and we hadn't been to Aaron either. Uh, being to every arena in this league, I got to say, and it's not just because I'm wearing the jersey. I'm sitting with two guys who could probably beat me up that are also wearing the jersey. But Tilsonburg does put an amazing product on the ice, and the environment that's created. Uh, just by you guys through all those volunteers you talked about and and uh, then what the guys do as I said when they get out there It's it's an amazing experience. So if you haven't been able to get to a Thunder game October 7th home opener this Saturday uh, This episode should be releasing Friday. So it'll be releasing on the 6th The 7th is going to be the first home game 730 puck drop get there early get to see the warm-ups uh, We're expecting a decent crowd. So make sure you get in line Get you 50-50. We have a great snack bar, by the way. Uh, Chrissy does a great job. I absolutely love the fries, which are an absolute must. Everybody knows when you go to a road arena, the first thing you try is the coffee and the fries. Uh, the you, go, you, go the to, fries you go to Petrolia, get the fried egg sandwich. Okay, fried egg great, sandwich. Great that sounds fried. awesome. Great. We're going well, out not, to Petrolia. Not, not, not everything has worked out 100%. Nope. nope. Um, we, I thought maybe, you know, where the guys come out, dressing room one, mm -hmm. that kind of the corridor there. You yeah. know, if there was some smoke and some lasers, oh, yeah. that'd be pretty cool. Oh, yeah. We're so I, so I bought a, so I bought a say, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, I bought a smoke machine. Yeah. So I figured it was a practice. Yeah. So I figured, okay, let's, you know, try the smoke machine. So I gave it a couple shots. Um, the ventilation is really good in that arena. Yeah. Filled everything with smoke. Yeah, the whole like, I got all whole, whole the arena, the hallways, everything. <laughs> the, the, the people are running around trying to get this. Where's this fire? Oh, I guess maybe I should have bounced this off you before I give it a shot. <laughs> That's so we won't, we won't be doing that. No, I don't think the special effects team, like it would be really cool because we're the Thunder. It would be so cool to be like Amelie yeah. Arena in Tampa Bay and have oh, yeah. the lightning bolts coming off the scoreboard, but I don't think we'll be able to pull that one off. They have, a bigger okay. they have a bigger budget. Just than slightly, just yeah, slightly. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Um, but but uh, that was one thing I wanted to ask you, Mike. We've, we've talked about it in private uh, and uh, just in our own personal conversations here and there. You touched on how last year you saw the fan support skyrocket and also one of the most electric crowd atmospheres you've ever seen. If you want to kind of touch base on that from, from your perspective. as Well, a lot, a lot of it's come, coming out of COVID. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to get out, mm -hmm, and absolutely. we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, what we do typically, you know, I don't really want to have any home games in October November. Mm -hmm. It's a nice day. You, you don't have to do your gardening, whatever you can stay do. You got other things to do. Mm -hmm. um, going to a hockey game is down. Kind of a kind of a misty day, uh, cold, a little bit of that light snow. It's perfect for hockey because people want to go. Um, so you know our our crowds pick up December, January especially. Yeah. Because then the games start to matter. Although two points in October is two points in in January, but we'll move on from there. Mm -hmm. um, we had January crowds last October, mm -hmm. and it just got bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, you and the drum mm -hmm. was it was huge. Absolutely. You know, the, during the um, during the Tilbury series, you know, I was over by the. Um, the concession on the on the rail there, mm -hmm. and you were bang 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 go let's go thunder and all the guys, the whole crowds were just banging on chairs. Banging seats, it was yeah. insane. Mm -hmm. You know I love it. Mm -hmm. Go louder the better. Right, yep. just let's go crazy. The players pick it up too. Absolutely, I've because, had chats with them about yeah. it. I, I remember uh, Sagra messaged me after the preseason game and he said, I have never seen a a semi pro hockey league have a preseason crowd that you had eight year old we had eight year old kids starting let's go thunder chance. That's yep. what they they were banging on their seats and. They are, they're all yelling at me, where's the drum, where's the drum? And <laughs> I tried to explain, guys, I honestly didn't know that, that this was what the crowd would present for a preseason game, and that's my own fault, but I was so impressed, and I think that it's going to be, I'm expecting big things from the crowd this year because the word's getting spread. Tilsonburg as a town is growing as well, yeah. population-wise, and if you're coming from a city that, that has OHL or, or Junior B, come out and watch this. We have some incredible talent on the ice, you guys do a great job of, like I said, putting on a show, uh, both from the presentation side of things and physically on the ice. So I think, like I said, if you're if you're new to Tilsonburg or even if you've lived in town for years and you've seen the sign up that says Thunder playing Saturday at 7.30 and you've thought about it, because that's what the, my father and I were. We lived in Tilsonburg as a family for years and we saw the signs even way back for the Vipers. And yeah. we thought, you know what? Well, this couldn't be any more than just beer league on steroids. And you know what? We came out, and that product on the ice shut us up completely. Great. It is great hockey. And I know that some people, oh, well, it's double A and it's senior hockey. No, no, no. There are players that have played in the National Hockey League that play in this league. There are guys 
like our own Jamie McQueen that was an AHL standout and went and won championships in the DEL. Like this is a legitimate league. It's well run. I, I find it to be very clean and crisp hockey. I yeah. don't find it to be too buffoonery, goonery, as they like to say. Uh, you know what? Like you said, guys will stand up for themselves, but you won't see it just get out of control. And um, that's what I'm definitely shouting out to the residents of Tilsonburg and just Oxford County in general. If you live in all the way down, going down 19 and you're in Eden and you got nothing to do on a Saturday night and you don't want to watch the Leafs lose because they tend to do that <laughs> on Saturday nights, come down and see the Thunder. I'm wearing this hat. This team caused me to become a Thunder fan because they're so bad. The dad and I said, you know what? I don't want to watch the Flyers lose to the Islanders 6 nothing tonight. Let's go see what that town of Tilsonburg hockey team has to offer. And now I'm doing a podcast with the owner and my friends. So come down, watch the Thunder. Let's pack that barn. I want to see five, 600 people. And uh, we can promise we'll be back in the playoffs and we're going to put on a show because I want to see that trophy be hoisted by us. And I know you yeah. want it way more than I do even yeah. after being part of this organization organization excuse me for so many years you, you alluded to the ex- exhibition game mm-hmm. um for that game sean who does the time time he had to go to a wedding so mm-hmm. i was doing that yeah you're down in the cubicle down there yeah so i'm going along and i'm go- you're starting to hear it yeah i'm going yeah so i looked around because you know down there you don't see an awful lot yeah it was a good crowd absolutely um to, we do we've done this 16 years in a row now it's to get in was an was a donation to the food bank mm-hmm. we get we we got 380 pounds of food and 455 dollars all that's, donated to that's the food awesome bank. yeah it was awesome. it was really good the, the fans should be part of themselves mm-hmm, for sure um but you know, go ahead oh no i was just i was just gonna let you finish i was just leaning in um but yeah it, it, that's awesome to be able to see that just the support from a preseason game. Like I said, I got in touch with Matt Sagara, the goaltender, after the game. Because yeah. as I said, we actually are three, all three of us are goaltenders. And none of the three of us are as good as Matt Sagara. Except some Friday nights, Sags, I do put up a fight. But anyway, um, yeah, he, he had let me know. He said, he said, man, the crowd was amazing. I'd never yeah. seen anything like that, as I touched on, especially in an exhibition game. And he said that that's part of the reason why he wants to be with this team, is, is the fan support. And that spreads out to other guys as well. You know, yeah. guys who are signing here, other players are going to let them know, hey, the crowd last year in the playoffs was, was absolutely electric, and, and it, it motivates guys, right? And they yeah. want to see that because, you know, I know that the vets here in Woodstock put together a really good environment, and you get a lot of young kids out, and, and those guys who are playing for the vets, when they move on and get into senior hockey, you know, that's a situation where where them guys from Norwich and things like that, they want to they keep that going, and, yeah. and that's why the Thunder do a great job of putting that crowd together and and like I said, I'm proud to be part of it, even though I'll be calling the games. The drum will be with me when I can come on the road. And uh, well, your, your, bro- your brother's doing that, my, right? my brother and my dad. Right. And also so I, was gonna, I wasn't going to let you do play-by-play if no, you use the drum. I couldn't. No, the drum can, was part of the, the contract. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. The drum will be there. Uh, we're really excited for this season. And breaking down the schedule, um, so interesting. We go, we start at home, yeah, and then we go on a little bit of a road swing there. Yeah. Um, what are you well, expecting road-wise? Like, do you, do you think this team will be as strong on the road as they even were last year? Uh, well, se- senior ho- and, and senior hockey. The word senior is is misleading. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're still, like our old guys, I think I think it must be must be Finley by now. Yeah. Uh, 35, 36. Yeah. So you think of old old guys. You you think of guys like me that are going later on. So mm-hmm. senior hockey is a word we're trying to get 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 rid of. Absolutely. Um, but they also work. Absolutely. Um, they also have wives, mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. Wives have ruined a many good hockey player. I guess yeah. it, uh, Kathy, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we're all just, we're all just joking. Um, but you know, uh, it depends on their work schedules. Yeah, absolutely. you know, you have you have guys that basically that work like um, Robo, uh, Brian Roberts. He he works, uh, Brian Roberts. Sorry, uh, he works in um, Niagara Falls. He works at 4:30. He doesn't make practices, mm-hmm. but he makes he makes pretty much most of the games. Yep. Uh, guys get married. Yep. You know, I tell them you're supposed to schedule your wedding in the summertime, <laughs> not during hockey season. That's just the way it is. Yep. Um, you know, that's part part of senior hockey. Yep. The I'm not I'm not unhappy about starting most of our games on the road. Yeah. Um, you know, we do. You know, all most of October we have four road games in a row, mm-hmm. and you go to Woodstock, Dunville, Tilbury, and Petrolia. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. November fourth. I, I can't November, wait for that one. November eleventh, we have the our uh, Remembrance Day. Yeah. Um, that's important. That's when we'll be wearing the, the gold one that I'm wearing now is a special jersey. Mm-hmm. We're going to wear that for special occasions, probably for that one too. Awesome. Uh, we do have some good promotions going on. Yeah, I was going to ask you to kind of touch base on the yeah. the promotions for this year before we uh, send it off for the night. So. Any old time Thunder fans will remember uh, the Frosty Five. Yeah. Uh, what basically the that was with the Thunder score five goals goals or more, everybody gets a free Frosty. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that that one eventually went away. 
and Domino's has stepped up called Domino's Five. Nice. If we score five or more, everybody gets a free, um, a free medium three item pizza. That's amazing. So they'll be they'll be given vouchers. They'll be coming to the um, you go to the bar for that, yeah. and you'll be handed a, a voucher. It's only good for two weeks, yeah. but you use it for a free pizza. And it's an excellent program That's promotion. Amazing. I was with Will today. Um, we'll, it's a it's excellent. That's amazing. We're also with the Copper Zero and Three. We call it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's basically it's very similar to that. If it, if a Thunder player a Thunder player mm-hmm. scores a hat trick or gets a shutout. Then anybody get you get another again coupon to go to the mug for a free app. Nice. So you know that's that's another nice one. Sex, too. you better be getting a couple of those zeros for me. <laughs> yeah, I well like the mug. So well, there, there's the chance for the tender and the chance for the other guy. To Absolutely, do it, right? that's awesome. So you know those are some big promotions that yeah, we got. For sure, that's um, that's amazing. I'm really happy with that. That's yeah. I think the fans are really going to appreciate that, and that kind yeah. of stuff's going to help draw people as well, right? Yeah. So. Oh, that's that's awesome though. I'm I'm super happy that you were able to join us tonight, Mike and. We're, we're getting a little bit short on time, so I just wanted to thank you overall. Uh, and kind of a little closing thing, I just wanted to ask, uh, what made the league decide to go to VMF, and did you guys know that they did this good of work? Because I'm super impressed. Uh, uh, you're talking with Vito. Um, Vito does fantastic work. Absolutely. Um, he's six years out of Rome. He has a heavy-duty uh, Italian accent. Yeah. So sometimes he has to tell me three four times for me to understand <laughs> what he's saying. That's awesome. Um, you know, it's seven, you figure 7.13 would be 13 minutes after 7. Yeah. It's not. It's seven three zero. Um, he, he said he's going to get me hats. He get fourteen hats for the team. I go, fourteen is not enough. Yeah. No, fourteen. That that's it. fine. He's oh, 14, four zero. <laughs> oh no, no, okay, no. But so sometimes you repeat. But um, I'm very happy with VMF. Absolutely. Um, they did the e-commerce site. You know, you can get the. You can order directly off that. Yeah. Uh, you can order through the team. The team does better if you order directly th- mm-hmm. through us. Mm-hmm. Um, we got the blankets, which are really nice. You'll see a lot of the stuff yeah, on. We're gonna get one and. We're going to hang it up in here. Yeah, so. I should have brought it. Um, oh, next, snap. next time, right? Next time, yeah. Um, anyways, so, you know, I'm very excited about the VNL. We're going to stay with them. I'm happy with them. Absolutely. Um, a little bit of communication. He's trying to do it for a lot of teams mm-hmm. all at once. The guy's mm-hmm. working his tail off. Oh, absolutely. That's so, a lot. So, you know, we, like we just got the season A's today yeah. to put on the jersey. The Irene, the seamstress, is working yeah. hard on that. That's awesome. You so, go, Irene. There you go. That's, uh, that's but, awesome. Um, Those, they just they look so crisp. I, I'm so happy with with the obviously the end result and i could definitely say as a fan slash broadcaster slash podcast host i will definitely be buying a full set myself so and i want the full stitching we're gonna go home away and road and uh like i said uh, just home away and road or home road and away yeah home Away. Wait, and oh, the, the third, alternate next, jersey. And third, and third jersey, yeah. <laughs> I'm going home. With, thank you for correcting me on that because I'm sitting here oh, home you, away you, and you, road as if the away and the road jersey are two different things. That's yeah, your first year with the Thunder. You're a rookie. We'll, exactly. we'll, we'll, we'll train you. I'm a rookie. I need to get hosed for that one. There you go. But uh, thanks again to my colleague for joining us tonight. Uh, it was an honor to have you on, and uh, we're definitely looking forward to having you on in future episodes as the season progresses. Maybe the smiles will change a little bit and the seriousness will kick up. But overall, once again, Huge thank you to Mike Hawley, the president and owner of the Tilsonburg Thunder. Thanks for coming on with us tonight, Mike. Thanks for doing this. And we'll be in touch, and let's go Thunder.